You've heard of the Netherlands, right? Of course you did. It's a small Western European country, one of the richest and most prosperous. But did you know that this country is actually only a part of a larger kingdom? That's right, there's such a thing as the Kingdom of the Netherlands that's made up of several different countries. One of them is Aruba, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Aruba is as far away as you can imagine from mainland Europe. It's a tiny island of the Caribbean off the coast of Venezuela. It's an autonomous country, but it's not sovereign, meaning it's legally a part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Less than 120,000 people live here in an area that's about the same size as Washington DC, around 180 square kilometers. Obviously, being a Caribbean island, Aruba is a tourist magnet, but more on that later. So, let's begin to explore this tiny paradise that somehow came to be a part of the Netherlands. Let's start at the beginning. Humans discovered Aruba a long time ago. The first signs of habitation are about 4000 years old, but pretty much all traces of those people have been wiped out by time, so little is known about them. More recently, the Arawak Kakitio Amerindians migrated to the island some 1000 years ago and remained there right up until the first Europeans arrived. Amerigo Vespucci was the first to spot Aruba in 1499 and claimed it immediately for Spain. Soon after, settlement of the island began and the natives were forced into slavery, because of course they were. But Spain held Aruba for less than 150 years. The Netherlands seized it during the Thirty Years' War, which is how Aruba became Dutch. During the 20th century, Aruba ceased to be a colony and became part of the so-called Netherlands Antilles, a newly formed country that grouped all Dutch colonies of the area into one entity. From this, Aruba later became a separate entity, but as to how that happened, we'll talk about it in a few minutes. Oranjestad is the capital city of Aruba, named after King William I of the House of Orange. It started out as a very small settlement around Fort Zutman, but after 1924, when oil was discovered, the island's population and prosperity exploded. Today, Oranjestad is the main urban center of Aruba with colorful colonial landmarks, malls, hotels and all the amenities one would expect from a Caribbean destination. If you're one of the lucky ones to go on vacation to Aruba, Oranjestad will likely be your gateway to the island. Once in Aruba, you're probably expecting a lush green environment full of palm trees. Well, that's not really what you'll find. You see, Aruba has a dry climate, so much of its landscape is actually desert-like. That's right, Aruba is largely a flat, riverless island dotted with shrubs and cacti. Don't fret though, the western coast has white sandy beaches as far as the eye can see and the climate is perfect for sunbathing all year round. The tourism infrastructure is very well developed and for all intents and purposes you'll be treated like a king during your stay. Don't believe me? Just ask the 1 million tourists who choose Aruba as their vacation spot every year. Now about that autonomy. After the formation of the Netherlands Antilles in 1954, Aruba wasn't satisfied with the arrangement. They were basically grouped together with other island nations that were culturally different to them. Starting from the 70s, a political movement arose, demanding more autonomy and ultimately complete independence. Even a referendum was held and 82% of the participants chose full independence. By 1986, Aruba seceded from the Netherlands Antilles, becoming a separate country within the kingdom. The plan was that by 1996, Aruba would receive full independence, but the collapse of the oil industry was an unexpected blow to the local economy. The idea of full independence was abandoned, and in 1990, at the request of Aruba's Prime Minister, this process was postponed indefinitely. So how does Aruba's autonomy work? Well, the country remains a member of the Kingdom of the Netherlands and such matters like foreign affairs and defense are handled by the kingdom. The citizens of Aruba are citizens of the Netherlands and by extension of the European Union, but the country itself is not part of the EU, although they do receive support from EU authorities. 
No, you can't use euros here. Instead, the country has its own currency, the Aruban Florin, which is pegged to the US dollar. I know it's a complicated mess, but for now at least, it works. Aruba remains a country with one of the highest standards of living in the Caribbean region. While Dutch is the sole language used in administration, it is not the only language spoken in Aruba. Most people speak Papiamento, a unique Creole language unlike anything you've heard before. Papiamento is a colorful mixture of Spanish and Portuguese, but that's just part of the story. The Spanish it's based on is Old Spanish, and the Portuguese has strong hints of Judeo-Portuguese, a now extinct language spoken by Jews in Portugal. And there's a considerable influence from Dutch too. To this mixture, we add Cape Verdean Creole and Guinea-Bissau Creole, two West African languages that probably arrived here in the heydays of African slave trading. In short, this is one of the most unique and beautiful languages out there. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.